Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you are tuning in. Welcome to Homesteading and Gardening in the Suburbs. I'm Emma from Misfit Gardening and, well, the spring equinox has just passed, so happy spring, everyone. Um, and i got to say, one of the challenges of living at an altitude is the unpredictability of the weather. After the first day of spring, we got snow and ice overnight, and I'm just really glad that I didn't transplant my broccoli, cabbage, and lettuce is outside just yet because um, they would not have been ready for that cold snap but the extra ice and snow have given me extra time to think about um, composting crops and some other um, kind of sustainability things like my husband and I have been making those unpaper towels so that's been kind of fun, um, busting out the, the sewing machines that I have and kind of playing around with them. And because my husband's just really into woodworking, he's kind of designed this really cool um, holder for the unpaper towels that we could use, whether like we get normal paper towels or whether we just kind of stick with these uh, cloth um, towels instead. Um, so that's been really fun activity, both of us kind of working on things that we enjoy, like I've been doing the sewing piece he's been building um this other piece so that's that's kind of cool um I'll have to share some pictures in the Facebook group when that's that's ready. Um, but this this extra time with the snow has been really good because I've been able to kind of look outside, look at what's going on in the garden. Um, now we've been doing some clean up and tidy up um, while the weather's been good. Um, but now I can kind of think a little bit more about what I'm going to be growing in the garden and taking some, some time to plan out some of these composting crops. And one of the things that... I really like about not just the intensive gardening side of things but also permaculture is growing things that have multiple uses and that's that's really what a lot of permaculture design um practitioners do is help you to design a space where things are working in synchronicities and they have multiple uses so you're getting like the most efficient use of energy in the space and by energy I'm meaning like you know light from the sun or uh, resources from the property as a whole. Um, so this podcast episode is going to be about six compost crops and why you should consider growing them in your intensive garden this year. So let's dig in and get started. Crop number one is sorghum or broom corn. And this is a really interesting plant and I'd never heard of it until recently. Um, but it produces these really tasty seeds that can be used like a porridge or kind of like a, a grain. Um, like if you're used to making you know, wild rice or ancient grains, um, then you can use it in kind of a similar fashion there. But they come in lots of different varieties and some varieties, the canes, can actually be pressed to make a sweet syrup. And some of the varieties are really productive in the syrup department and they can yield like a gallon of syrup from a hundred square foot planting, um, which is quite a lot when you have to consider that you've got to squeeze it all down and then heat it all up to drive off some of the water to turn it into, you know, a sugary syrup. Um, but broom corn varieties were traditionally used to make um, hearth brooms. Although now you might find broom corn with their coloured seed heads in flower arrangements in late summer or early fall. But sorghum grows really tall and because it grows really tall it produces a lot of biomass. So that's really ideal as a carbon source. And if you're pressing the canes and making them into syrup then those crushed canes can still go into the compost pile and kind of the cool thing with them about being crushed is uh it's a, a little bit easier for them to break down um by those microbes that are in the compost so if you're considering growing something that's got lots of different uses then really think about adding sorghum or broom corn um to your garden this year and there's some really great varieties that you could um look for to try in your garden so some popular syrup varieties uh, include Mennonite, and that's ready in about 105 days. Um, there's Iowa Sweet that's ready in about 110 days, and both of those are available from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. Um, Sugar Drip is very popular, um, as is the Black Amber Cane, and both of those are available at Amca Seeds, uh, which is A-M-K-H-A 
seeds um, and that's kind of a, a smaller seed company that I've recently found and I've ordered uh, a number of different grain crops from them so um, they're going to be a child in the garden this year so that's going to be fun. Um, if you're looking for something that's just for grains because that's something that's interesting you in the garden um, then Adaptive Seeds has a early variety that uh, comes from China called uh, Baye Ba Yi Ki, uh, B A Y E Q I is how you spell that um, and that's that's a really early variety um, that's producing well in the Pacific Northwest. Um, broom corn varieties include Texas Black and that's also available from Amca Seeds. Um, red broom seed corn was a traditional hearth broom variety um, and that has these beautiful like red seed heads on there and that's available at Southern Exposure Seed Exchange um, or if you're wanting something that's got different colors in there because you want it for or, um, seed arrangement or oh, not seed arrangement flower arrangement excuse me then maybe consider something like mixed colors broom corn which is available at seed savers exchange so there's lots of different um, sources of sorghum available um, so take a look and see which ones that you like best uh, amaranth is up next for crop number two and grain amaranth looks absolutely stunning in a garden and grain amaranth grows tall so it can get two to four uh two to six feet sorry four to six feet my goodness i can't talk today um which is not as tall as as sorghum um but it's definitely taller than some corn varieties um but i gotta tell you the colors of the seed heads Oh my goodness, they range from like a fiery orange, bright reds, even pinks, all the way through to dusky sunset hues. And they are incredibly striking against a backdrop of green in the garden. Um, amaranth is a really cool vegetable because you can eat the leaves kind of like spinach so you can have them raw when they're young and small and then cooked when they're more mature plus the green the seeds and the grains are edible as well um, and if you're really wanting a bang for your buck on space in the garden if you cut amaranth for grain so towards the base new leaves often sprout giving you another round of baby leaves for salad so amaranth is a really cool crop to have in the garden especially if you've shot on space and you're wanting to grow you know things that have got an extended harvest available to you um, but of course after harvesting the seeds the seed heads and stalks make a great addition to the compost heap for both carbon but also minerals like calcium because amaranth has a lot of calcium in it um, which is kind of cool to know um, especially if you were looking at making sure that you're getting like a well-rounded diet um, some really nice varieties to try in the garden are sunset goldilocks and they're available at Adaptive Seeds. There's also Red Giant and Mayo, uh, Mayo Indian and both of those are available at Restoration Seeds or absolutely beautiful coral fountains are available from Uprising Seeds. Let's talk about crop number three and my third crop is fava beans or broad beans and I feel that this is one that people are either going to love or hate. <laughs> I personally love broad beans and they're actually one of my favorites and one of my favorite things to do with uh, my maternal grandmother was to go out into her garden and uh, or onto the allotment and help her harvest broad beans and I would often be snacking on them raw straight out of the pod um, rather than them being cooked but even when they were cooked they were just super delicious to me. I like them like sautéed with onions and a little bit of garlic on some real nice crusty sourdough. Oh, it's just delicious delicious but um i gotta say my favorite broad bean so far in the garden is um aprovecho select from adaptive seeds and i really hope i pronounced that right um but the seeds are freaking huge um in fact if you are um on instagram check out um 
my pictures because there's pictures of the um, Aprovecho Select seeds that are there that I saved and they're massive so I'm really excited to be growing them again this year um, but there's also lots of other great varieties like Windsor or Sweet Lorraine and you can get those both at Southern Exposure Seed Exchange and really interesting dark purple uh, fava bean seeds um, of the variety called Frog Island Nation and that's available from Uprising Seeds Fava beans seem to be one of these things that are, that there's not a lot of varieties that are readily available, but once you start digging into fava beans, you realize that there's a lot of people that have got these really cool varieties, especially if you're looking through um, like the exchange on Seed Savers Exchange, or if you're part of some of these seed trading um, Facebook groups. There's some really cool varieties that start to uh, become available for you to try and grow. Now, since fava beans are part of the legume family, they fix nitrogen in the soil and provide a source of nutrients for the next crop. I like to cut the plants at ground level after harvesting the seeds because I'm most interested in harvesting the beans for the pods. Uh, or, well, the, the beans, not, not the pods. I harvest the pods for the beans. Oh dear. I obviously need more coffee this morning. Um, but I also like to save the, the seed from the plants to then uh, fuel uh, my growing for the garden next year like I love seed saving and if you guys listened to um, the episode last week you'll know um, that I do quite a lot of that and I was kind of doing a mini training episode about planning your garden for seed saving but fava beans actually if you're wanting them for the compost are much better if you are going to harvest them for their biomass so what you could do is if and this is especially ideal if you're not a fan of favas um, which I know many of you aren't but what you can do is you can cut them at the soil level when they are about 50% flowering so like take a look at your plants you want them to be flowering but not producing seeds yet so if you start to see that pod being produced you got to cut it there and then and then those plants can get put into your compost pile and it's at the maximum amount of nutrients and biomass um, for your garden and I like to leave the the roots in the ground because as they decompose um, they'll start to release that nitrogen that has been um, you know locked into the soil from from the air um but you know if if you don't want to do that you could just pull them all up um straight out of the garden and put them all into the compost pile but just make sure to add more compost back to the garden bed before you are planting your next crop to replace those nutrients that are lost let's talk about crop number four and that is sunflowers yep sunflowers produce a lot of carbon biomass um, especially tall varieties like grey mammoth mongolian or my new favorite transylvanian giant um i don't know why but i kind of imagine it to have like i don't know a little widow's peak going on it doesn't but in my brain um i think that would be kind of funny Anyway, um, the stalks are great for the compost pile and the flowers are a magnificent magnet uh, to pollinators for your yard. And I think sunflowers are quite possibly one of my favourite flowers. Um, I also really like sweet peas because uh, they remind me a lot of my grandmother. Um, but sunflowers... It's really hard not to smile when you see them. And I love to see people stopping um, to look at the sunflowers growing in the garden. And, you know, you can see on their faces, they're amazed at how tall they grow above the six foot fence line. Um, so I think it's, it's a really cool thing to add sunflowers into your garden anyway, because they're a great way to um, provide a food source for some of those beneficial insects that we're wanting to bring in there. And I have an amazing friend in Texas who grew some sunflowers um, in her garden. We did a seed swap last year and they look truly stunning. And she had them like mixed in with all of these other flowers in this flower garden. 
But if you're short on space, and I get it, not a lot of us have, you know, space for both like an edible garden and a flower garden, you can actually try growing climbing beans or pole beans among your sunflowers too. If you're short on space and you want to maximize food production, you could also look at growing varieties that are grown for their seed. Um, or if you're wanting to look more at um, sunflower oil production, then you can grow those oil seed varieties. Um, top tip though, Hello? If you're seed saving, the seeds around the center of your sunflower head are the ones with the seeds in them. The outer seeds, although they're bigger, they're often empty. So just a little, a little tip there. All right, let's talk about my fifth compost crop. And this is an unusual one, which is lentils. And I got to tell you guys, I am thrilled to be growing lentils this year. This is the first year that I'm going to be growing them. Um, they're another legume, so they fix nitrogen in the soil, making them a wonderful soil building crop to add to your garden. Um, we eat the seeds like beans, but here's the interesting thing. Lentils pack in a lot for such a small package. They pack a lot of calcium, calories, and protein, and they're only small. They're teeny. Um, so that's that's, that's a really fantastic um, resource if you're trying to you know, grow a more sustainable diet. Um, the seeds are not very easy to get hold of, unfortunately, for lentils. It's not a, a common crop that people are growing in their garden. And I really wish that it was because they're really versatile in the kitchen. Um, so seeds... Um, that you can get hold of that I've been able to easily find uh, were black and uh, lapui lentils and they're available at Uprising Seeds. Uh, Amca Seeds offers French green and Native Seed Search has uh, Vedito, which is a variety of lentils that are perfect for the Southwest and for those uh, who live at an altitude, because I guess their seed stock came from um, somebody who was saving them, uh, who was growing them at an altitude of um, 8,000 feet above sea level. So that's a good variety if uh, you're like me at an altitude and you're wanting to see about growing them. Now, I mentioned lentils are incredibly versatile in the kitchen. Um, lentil and bacon soup is one of my family's favorite soups. And the great thing is that it can be made in a crock pot or a slow cooker, which makes it ideal for a busy weeknight meal. We also love lentils with sweet potatoes, butter beans or lima beans. Don't tell my husband. Um... <laughs> but I, I like to dress them up in a uh, tomato -y stew and that's another slow cooker special for the week um, and is really good for cooking in a batch if you're busy. So I definitely urge you to consider growing lentils and let's help make lentils a little bit more popular for small um, scale homesteaders. I think it's a, a really well worth crop to, to be growing. All right, let's talk about my final crop uh, for compost crops and that is corn and in particular flint dent or flower corn and these are commonly known as field corns. These grow tall, they produce a lot of carbon biomass in the stalks and they're great for producing compost while the kernels are a really good source of calories. Field corns are not for eating fresh and I once made the mistake of eating painted mountain corn fresh and put it on YouTube and it was terrible um, because I didn't realize that there was differences between corns. Um, I, I'll be totally honest, I barely managed to grow corn in the UK. I was, uh, it was very hit and miss for me to grow. Um, one of the first uh, varieties of corn that I grew successfully um, here in the US was glass gem corn which was absolutely wonderful. Um, and then I grew Painted Mountain Corn because it looked really pretty and I thought like all corn was, was fresh eating corn and it is really not. Um, and different corns, um, like different field corns, have different uses in the kitchen. So dent, flint and flower corns are for other things than eating fresh. So flint corn is usually good for boiled recipes like making it into polenta. Um, dent corns are better for turning into cornbread or hominy um, or even using as animal feeds and that's what I ended up doing with the painted mountain corn was it just ended up going to the chickens because I didn't know how to use it in the kitchen 
And I wonder if that's kind of the problem with lentils too. People don't really know how to use them in the kitchen, so we don't really consider growing them. Anyway, um, flour corn is one of the easiest to turn into cornmeal. And I've gotten a little bit obsessed uh, with cornmeal since I discovered that I can actually make a decent cornbread. And um, for those of you who know me, who listen um, to this podcast, you'll know that my cooking skills have not been the greatest. Like I used to be okay at cooking cooking and um then I I sort of you know got terrible at it because I never really got used to how things um changed at an altitude for cooking and I've been working really hard at trying to get my cooking mojo back and you know one of the things that I've really been challenging myself this year is to do a lot more cooking from scratch and because of that I've been digging into a lot more recipes and trying things more in the kitchen and I was really surprised that I actually could make a pretty decent cornbread and my husband actually complimented uh, me on that and he doesn't often compliment me on my food he usually has this look on his face that is like you know just just try not to think about the taste let's just just get this meal over with um but i also discovered these really cool um cornmeal and whole wheat flour waffles and so far my family haven't noticed that they're eating healthier waffles for a special breakfast um so i was quite proud of myself that i've been able to do that and um there's so many different colors of um field corn that are available so there's kind of some interesting things that you can do in the kitchen like you can make blue uh blueberry muffins or um waffles for instance with a blue variety of cornmeal so they're like extra blue um which which you may want to do you may not want to do but here's the thing when you are eating different colors of foods you're eating different um nutrients um different levels of uh phytonutrients so ones that are coming from plants there's different level of antioxidants and stuff in there uh vitamins and minerals so it's actually better for you to be eating different colors of foods um and because of that there's so many different varieties of corn that are available so definitely take a look at the field corn so the dent corn flint corn and flower corns that are available and see what you might want to try growing in your garden so I've got a couple of varieties that you might want to try. So there's Mandan Bride uh, Flower Corn that's available at Seed Savers Exchange. There's the beautiful Earth Tones Dent Corn from Restoration Seeds. Looks like a kind of shimmery... um, uh, uh, glass gem con which is really quite pretty um, there's the Cherokee White Eagle down con from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange and Amca Seeds carries Floriani Red and Lancaster Shore Crop and both of those are Flint con varieties um, so let me know in the Facebook group what compost crop you are growing this year I love to see your garden pictures and hear from you about what you're growing and I hope that you found this episode useful so let me know in the Facebook group what compost crop are you going to be growing this year or are you going to be trying something new let me know and until next time i hope your garden grows beautifully and i'll see you all next week